today on Dr. Phil. He's a 23-year-old father who still lives at home. Chase is a deadbeat dad. While his girlfriend takes care of their son. Sydney juggles two jobs, school and motherhood. Mom takes care of the rest. He gets arrested, you pay the court cost, you handle his probation, he does nothing, right? Yes. Chase gives this much child support. You think you've gotten a bad deal from your mother? I do. She spent $10,000 on herself. She could be helping me. Is it time for this dad? I only play video games maybe four hours a night. To grow up. Get on a bus and go look for a job. I've never ridden a bus. I don't know how to do it. You're saying you need somebody to show you how to ride a bus? Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free. Take it. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. We get thousands of letters, usually from wives, asking if they should get a divorce. But today, we have a husband so desperate to save his marriage that he circled the courthouse in his car for six hours until he finally made a decision to write the show instead of walking up those steps and filing for divorce. His name is Ed, and he has been married to Jonna for just two years. Now, to friends and family, they appear to be the perfect couple. But little does anyone know, there is someone coming between them. Take a look. I love my wife, Jana, but I want to tell her son to get off his ass, lazy ass. The situation with Chase has had a major impact on our marriage. I'm on the brink of divorce. I met Jana in 2007, and she said she had an 18-year-old son. He was still trying to finish high school, and he was still living with her. In the beginning, Chase was pretty much in his room most of the day playing video games. The day that Chase decided that he wanted to move out, Jana said, no more video games. At that time, he made arrangements to go live with a friend of his. Eventually, Chase moved to Texas to live with his grandmother. He does nothing in Texas right now. He does absolutely nothing. Chase's lifestyle is basically he wakes up about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He feeds himself. Once in a while, he'll brush his teeth. Once in a while, he'll bathe but then he's immediately on his video games. Chase has never worked more than 20 hours a week. Jonna has paid for Chase's legal troubles, his fines, his court costs, his probation stuff. Chase has a resume, looks very good, because his mother did it for him. When I first found out that Chase and his girlfriend, Sydney were gonna have a baby, I thought this might be the hello wake up call for Chase to get his act together. Having a son did not motivate Chase. Chase went on as business as usual. I want my wife to realize he's gotta grow up. Stop sending him money. Stop enabling him. If things don't change, the divorce thing is gonna happen. Well, Jonna says she is sick and tired of Ed butting in. She says he doesn't get unconditional love because he just doesn't have any children of his own. Take a look at what she has to say. He doesn't want to do anything because he knows that you take care of him. So no, no as much as much as yeah, look away. This is the part where I get up and leave. Yeah, and then he tells me he's done and then he wants a divorce. I'm in a no-win situation between my son and my husband. I can't say or do the right thing for either one of them. When Chase moved out, I spent hours on the computer. I made a resume. I would go on Craigslist, just send it everywhere, apply for jobs. I even asked people that I knew that had companies if they would hire him. They offered him jobs, full-time benefits. He wouldn't take it. It was beneath him. When I would tell Chase, you looked for a job, how are you doing school? Chase would get very defensive with me and start telling me to shut the 
Ha. Go to hell. You're a bad mom. All you care about is your husband. Why did you wait till in three days ago to tell me you set money for his teeth? If we were not coming here, would you have told me about that? To avoid an argument, I probably wouldn't have. I feel like I can't tell Ed everything because it just causes more resentment towards my son with him. Ed is controlling when it comes to my son. It's like he wants the attention on him. He has a lot of insecurities himself. I feel torn that if I help my son, my marriage will fail. I feel like my husband almost doesn't want me to have a relationship with my son until he gets his life together, and I can't do that. I love my son more than the air I breathe. I would do anything for him. I would give my life for that kid. Why is that kid? I would do anything for him. Okay. You mean what you just said? Yes. You love your son, you would do whatever. Do you hurt for him now? I do. I hate seeing where he is. I hate that he's not doing anything with his life. Mm -hmm. And that now there's a baby involved, and now I have to worry about Noah because his dad's not stepping up to the plate for his son. He's worried about video games. And you want this situation to change? Yes. And you're willing to do whatever? I will do whatever you tell me to do. Even if it means you hurting in the process? My feelings, I need to worry about what's best for Chase and Noah and our, our family. I will do whatever you tell me <clears throat> to do. If it hurts me, I will do it. Are you parenting him out of guilt? I believe I am parenting him out of guilt because his father wasn't there. And I just, I feel guilty that his father wasn't a part of his life and he's having to do without a dad like yeah. I did. So how did you do as a single mom early on? I struggled very hard to take care of me and Chase. Um, I worked <laughs> full-time jobs. I worked two jobs to take care of Chase. Well, here's what he says. He says that you jumped from man to man that he was left home alone a lot and that you were not nice to him at all. True or false? That's not true. He said that you were in a lot of unhealthy relationships, that he saw you mistreated, he saw you cry, he saw you upset a lot. He said it was great when it was just the two of you, uh, but he says that you're materialistic, uh, you do nothing for him, that you put him down. Um, he says you do more for his son and the son's mother than you do for him, and um, that he blames his way of life on the way you raised him that you dropped the ball. You didn't teach him anything. You weren't there for him. You don't support him now. And that he just came home one day and you were laying on the couch <laughs> and you just said, oh, by the way, he's moving in. No, that's, that's not. I'm just telling you what he said. Right, no, I understand. Yeah. That's not what happened. So what did happen? Ed and I met at the end of 2007. Well, don't start with oh, him. Okay. You, you're skipping over a whole no, lot no, of no, stuff okay. here. He's saying you weren't there when he was growing up. I you was. were jumping from man to man, one unhealthy relationship to another, parading a bunch of guys through his life, um, and none of it constructive for him. There was not a parade of men in Chase's life. That's one thing I wanted to guard him against. He was not paraded around. That's coming from my mother. No, I'm just telling you what he said so you know what's in his no, perception. No, I, I understand. So how are you two getting along? Well, uh, I waited 40, 46 years to get married. I had never been married before. I fell in love with her. I'm still in love with her. I couldn't do any better than, than what she is. She doesn't have a mean bone in her body. I'd like to install one so she could deal with some things. So why'd you wait 47 years? Well, I was waiting for somebody to get me pregnant first, I guess. I don't know. I just, it was just, <laughs> I mean, no, I, I, my grand, listen, my grandfather said do it once, do it right, 
and don't worry about the age, how long it takes. And I met her, and I wanted to get married. If you knew then what you know now, would you still marry her? Coming up. He gets arrested. You pay $3,500. $3,500. Oh, you, you got bulletins coming. Call CNN. Is there a seatbelt? If you knew then what you know now, would you still marry her? Yes. Well, you're circling the courthouse for six hours thinking about getting a divorce. Well, Dr. Phil, I, I've got to do something. I've, I've got to... My, my thing is, is that you saw in the piece that uh, when I get aggravated with this thing, because it, it just goes in a cycle. Do you and want him to butt out? Stay I'm, out of your relationship with your son? Uh, on certain things. He constantly is just like, your son needs to do this, your son needs to do that. I know my son needs to do this, and I know he needs to do that. I can't get him to do anything. And Dr. Phil, it's hard for me to butt out when I hear so, him call, tell his mother to shut the up and call her this word and hang up on her. It's hard for me not to say anything, and I've done damn well. I've not confronted him to this day. I've not confronted him in person on his, the treatment of his mother. We're not dealing with a 14-year-old. We're dealing with a 24-year-old man here that does not treat a mother like that. Are you enabling him? I, I am mm -hmm. enabling him. I was enabling okay, him. Before you yes. answer that question, let, let, me, let me hit a reset button here. Okay. Have you ever seen this show before? I watch your show religiously. Every day. Okay, then... Let me hit the rewind button here. Just... <laughs> Are you enabling him? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, really, you don't... How did you do that? You don't... Because she knows that I have an entire deck of cards here mm -hmm. filled up with your enabling behavior. So don't, don't waste three minutes of my life that I can't get back. No, I understand. Wasting time with telling me... <laughs> <laughs> He gets arrested, you do the paperwork, you pay the court cost, you handle his probation, you handle getting an expunge for the record, you pay $3,500. He does nothing. Right? Yes. $3,500. Yeah, you, oh, you, oh, Is trust this the me. part where I leave? No, you're not even started yet. <laughs> you, you got bulletins coming. Call CNN. Uh, you pay his cell phone bills. How many jobs have you applied for for him? He didn't apply for them. You applied for them. Numerous. How many? It, we're back to wasting my time. Thousands. Thousands. I mean, just recently you applied for over 500 jobs for him. Mm -hmm. How many did he apply for while you were applying for those 500? Probably none. None. Eh, zero. How many jobs did you get him out of that? He got four job offers, correct? Correct. How many did he take? None. Eh. Who wrote his resume? I did. Yeah. How many did he write? None. Eh. Zero. So you're paying his expenses, you're paying his court costs, you're applying for jobs. He's not. That's what I call enabling. Chase says that the word enabling is being taken out of context here. I'll let him explain that. He can put a frame around that when he comes out. You're doing this stuff for him. Necessity is the mother of invention. Does he owe child support? He doesn't pay child support. Does I he pay. owe child yes. support? Yes. How much? Since that baby's been born. How much? I, I mean, Dr. I, Phil, I, we can't I, put a number on it. I can't put a number on it. He doesn't. We we he just pick work. it up. I mean, we just pick how it much up. did you pay last year? I pay five thousand dollars a year in child support. Yeah because I don't want my grandson to do without because his dad's not stepping up to the plate. Yeah, who pays it? You pay it. He I doesn't pay it. I pay it because I don't want Noah to suffer and do without. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't ask you why. I just asked no, you who pays it. No, you pay it. He doesn't pay it. Correct. Okay. It's his baby. Yes. Not yours. Right. You pay it. Okay. Don't yeah. look at me. I'm, this is I'm... new to me. Yeah. Yeah, I told you. You're just getting started. <laughs> um, is there a seat belt? I ask you, you said, I'm willing to do anything to help him. The good news is it's not too late for him. 
the bad news is you're sabotaging him to make yourself feel better. You're not doing this to help him because you're not helping him. You couldn't hinder him anymore if you hit him in the knee with a bat. Children learn things. Adults learn things by watching themselves master their environment. And if you take away from them the ability to see themselves master their environment, they never learn that they can. And what happens if, God forbid, all of you are just zapped from the face of the earth? Grandmother, you, everybody's zapped from the earth. Then he's just left there with an Xbox in his lap. He doesn't know how to pay taxes. He doesn't know how to fill out an application for a job. He doesn't know anything. He's just there because you didn't do what you needed to do for him to get ready. And that needs to change today. Okay, coming up, Chase says, in a perfect world, he and his mom would be living together without Ed. We'll hear from him. We're going to meet Chase when we come back. You're going to like this guy. We'll be right back. My mother is very materialistic. She'll go out and buy, like, breast and plants. She spent $10,000 on herself, and I have nothing. It kind of makes me angry because she could be helping me. Ed says he only wanted to marry one time and one time only. But within the last two weeks, he's been thinking about divorcing his wife of just two years. He says he can't stand the way she enables her 23-year-old son, Chase. That's right, I said 23-year-old son. He's an adult. According to Ed, Chase is a lazy slacker looking for free handouts from his mom. Chase doesn't see it that way, not even almost. He says his mom should be putting him first. He's her son, and that's what mothers are supposed to do for their kids. I know he's not a kid. But that's what he says. Take a look. My mom doesn't help me like she should. If my mom would have been a better mom to me, then I know for a fact that I'd be off to having a normal life and succeeding. My childhood sucked. It was lonely. I mean, I had nice things, but like, the main thing I needed was her. She wasn't there. My mother's always putting men before everything, and it's like I'm not even there. My mother is very materialistic. She loves her Botox. She'll go out and buy, like, breast implants. She spent $10,000 on herself, $400 camera, and I have nothing. I mean, it kind of makes me angry because she could be helping me. My mom thinks I'm a horrible person. She has nothing good to say. She thinks I'm lazy. I don't want to do anything but just lounge around the house or play video games. She doesn't even know me. I am not working right now. I'm doing school full time. I only play video games, like, maybe three, maybe four hours a night. My grandmother is the mom I should have had. My grandma's always been encouraging me, always telling me how awesome I am, how good I am. That's why I have a good relationship with her. In an ideal world, my mom would be there. She'd be supporting of me. She'd love me. And Ed would not be in the picture. I need Dr. Phil's help. He needs to wake my mother up. But I want her to realize that she's a parent and she's a mom and that she needs to help me on things that I need help with. Okay, good to meet you. This is the first time y'all have seen each other since Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been a while, and you didn't see each other backstage or anything until just this moment, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is it good to see your mother? Yeah, I love her. <laughs> yeah? Miss her, yeah. Yeah, and it's because you left and you've been living with your grandmother. Mm -hmm. You think you've gotten a bad deal from your mother? I do. You, you think she gypped you, cheated you when you were younger? Yeah, she, she wasn't, she didn't show me. She wasn't there for you? She wasn't there when a lot of times, no. She yeah. thinks she was, but it really wasn't. She wasn't there. You say that she was um, otherwise involved. You said that she jumped from man to man. She had boyfriends. She left you home alone a lot. I was home alone a lot. Well, yeah. she wants to admit it, but I was. Yeah. You said you did bad in school because your mother got home late from bars and she put you down all the time. I did bad in school, yeah, because, I mean, it's well, never so, anything good. That's what good. you said. This is a quote from you, that your mother was home late from bars, et cetera, and, you, and, and put you down all the time. I was, yeah. Is that true? That's true. That's what you told us. That's true. Uh, is that true? I was not out all the time on the weekends. Yes, I went out. 
I had to work. It wasn't. Um, it was at least every other day that she would be out, and that's the truth. And you said you moved out because she put Ed above you. Well, I moved out because it was so sudden. Like, you know, I come home and I see someone like laying on the couch. I'm like, you know, I didn't expect that at all. And you guys don't remember that, but I do. He says that you spend money on Botox and boob job rather than on him. And that that's just not fair. That's not a priority. I don't believe I'm materialistic. I, I work hard for my money, and my, I like to take care of myself. But I also take care of my family. We also take care of a grandson, too. Yeah. That seems to be left out. Mm -hmm. So how's your life working now? Mine so far? I'm getting my school done. <clears throat> and once that's done, um, I was talking to my grandma about you know, what I want to do for my future. And I want to be a firefighter, so that's what I'm going to do. Are you working now? Not right now. I'm, when I get back to Texas, I'm going to look for a job, though. Yeah, I need one. It's boring where I'm at. It's just like woods and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So how long has it been since you've had a full-time job? I mean, when was the last time you worked 40, 50 hours a week? I've never been able to have a full-time job. I've always been part-time, like, you usually have to stay at the certain, well, every place I've ever worked at in Florida, which has been a lot of places, you have to work there for a certain amount of time before they'll actually allow you to be full-time. But you've never had a full-time job? When did you drop out of high school? I think right after I moved out of her house. Your mother says that you play as much as 12 hours a day of Xbox. If I played 12 hours a day, can you imagine what I'd look like? I mean, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'd you've be really like 50, obese. You've gained like 50 pounds, right? That's, well, that's Blue Bell ice cream. That stuff's good. <laughs> that's my grandma, though. She feeds me like I'm a fat kid there. I can't help it. But um, no, I don't play even close to 12 hours. There's no way. Yeah. Do you spend money on this stuff? I have. Um, there was one point where I, I mean, I did play like an online game and stuff. I was really depressed with, you know, my mom and my girlfriend and stuff. So like... I didn't know what to turn to, and like that was the only thing I turned to. But I sat there and thought about it, and where'd you get the money? Working. But you, you had a son then, right? Mm-hmm. But you spent money on the Xbox, but not the son. No, I spend money on my son all the time. He's never been without my. He's Do my. Do you pay child support? Do you pay child support? No. Me and my girlfriend, we haven't gone to the courts for nothing, so there's no child support. Well, but children cost a lot of money. Yeah, I, I get diapers. I, uh, you know, I've helped with stuff. I get them clothes when I go to Walmart. Yeah. I buy them things all the time. Because I, I, I gathered up all of this, these receipts of, of what you spent on, on this gaming. I know. Uh, back, that was back, as I said, that was a hard time. That's $1,228. I know. How do you spend that on a... I don't know, honestly. When I sat on there... A, and on a video game... I don't know. When you, you have a child that needs stuff. I know, but at the time, as I said, I was really hurting. I was really depressed. Because you said some stuff that just doesn't make sense to me. I, this doesn't make sense. You said, oh, I, I always pay money, take care of my son. Yeah, you, I if, did. If you, if you are chronically unemployed, you can't, and have a child, you can't afford $1,200 to spend on a video game. And if you say you're going to these jobs where you, you can't work full time, you have to work part time first, I don't. I'm not chronically unemployed. I've worked for a long time. Like I've, There are full time jobs out there for sure. Do geez. you look for a job all the time? Yeah. So, because my I attitude my is stuff. if you don't have a job, your job is finding a job. Exactly. And if you had a job, you would work 40 or 50 hours a week. So if you don't have a job, you would spend 40 or 50 hours a week looking for a job. You would mm -hmm. get on the bus, you would leave at 7 o'clock in the morning, you would go knock on doors till you got a job. And if they said, well, I can work you 20 hours a week, then great, I'll take it. Then you would go knock on another door, they would work you 20 hours a week. Then you would knock on another door, they would work you 15. Then you go 20, 20, 15, okay, I got a full-time job. You do whatever you have to do. Have you ever done that? I've never done that, no. 
I mean, that's what, I mean, I mean, I'm just telling you, you said nobody ever taught you how this works. This is how this works. If you don't have a full-time job, your full-time job is looking for a full-time job. Do, do, I understand. You I, get on a bus and go look for a job. Yeah. Did you, didn't you get him a bus pass? I did mind my bus pass he never used. Why? He, he said, said the bus he pass was beneath him or to ride a bus. Yep. I've never said that in my life. You sure did, because no. I heard you say it. He's being delusional. I've never oh, said you that. You did say that. I, I said that I've, I've never rid a bus. I don't know how to do it. I said, if you would like, show me. That's Chase, I, did I or did I not? You got me a bus okay, pass. No, I know, but let, let me speak to you. Did I or did I not get you the bus pass and show you where the bus stop was? It was only one bus. No, that you didn't show me. It was across the street from Lowe's in front of Perkins. I said, Chase, you only have to get on one bus. It will drop you off at Alderman Road, and you would have to walk literally maybe not even a half a mile to your place. So, wait a minute. You Seriously. did not do it. D did you say that it's beneath you to ride a bus? I've never said that so in my life. So the two of them are lying. He's lying. She didn't say that. I never said that. A bus is beneath me. I've ridden one bus before, but... Okay, and uh, you're 23 years old, and you're saying you need somebody to show you how to ride a bus? Well, like, I've, I've never done anything like that. Like, I mean, really. You, you didn't know that you, you stand at the bus stop and... No, I understand you, you stand there you, like normal, but You I, walk up there and you I give just, them your pass and you sit down and then you get off when it says, here's where you go? I don't know. I've never done that stuff. There's a lot of stuff I've never done. But that would be a great adventure. I mean, yeah. Right? <laughs> really, yeah. It's like, whoa, here we go, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, really? Uh, that would... I mean, uh, it's not beneath me. I'll ride a bus, no problem. Didn't I not offer you... It's in Tampa. That's over 30 minutes away with no vehicle. That's hard. Mommy can drive you. I don't want mm -hmm. Mommy to drive me. I want something that's closer. <laughs> That's easier for me to be able to get there. You got nothing can't be but choosers. Time. You got no, what do you you don't have thirty minutes to spare? No, I have thirty minutes. I but drive it's... forty-five minutes every day to work. I would have drove you there and dropped you off. But and... I don't want to rely on you. I want something that I can do for myself. Chase, you have a child. Walk on your knees if you have to to find a job. And I did, haven't I? I've had my job. You jobs. don't have I found a job, job now. Because I'm doing school. Okay, let's take a break. He, he, does, he, he does have a child. Uh, Chase's girlfriend says Chase has spent maybe $600 total on his two-year-old son. That's it. She says $600 in two years. That would be half of this stack. Uh, when we come back, let's hear from her and see what's going on. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. I, I want to get this on the table because I want to change this. And you said nobody has shown you what to do uh, to come up with a plan. Never. Well, I'm plan Stan. Well, that's... I, seriously. No, I want I, you to. I I'm, want I'm, you. I'm I want your you. guy. I'm the, one thing about me is I put verbs in my sentences. I'm, I'm the here's what to do guy. We'll be right back. How does she treat you? She treats me like I'm garbage. You're telling her to go kill yourself? You've called it whore, ugly, stupid. Is this what you say to her? Well, Ed says he is ready to divorce his wife, Jonna, if she doesn't cut the cord from her 23-year-old son, Chase. And I'm sure Chase thinks that that would just be a hell of a good idea. Ed says she gives Chase money, buys him cell phones, and even pays his child support for his two-year-old son. Ed says Chase is a deadbeat dad because he would rather play video games for 12 hours than get a job to support his son. Take a look. Chase is a deadbeat dad, and he's an abuser, both physically and verbally. After Noah was born, things got really heated and escalated between Sydney and Chase. We've had to referee quite a few altercations to try to calm this thing down while the baby's in the background screaming. Sydney and I have been together for almost seven years now. We get along, but we're young, so we're gonna have conflicts. We yell at each other, scream at each other. Stupid crap, it drives me nuts. Chase gives this much child support, that much, 
not a dime. If he has extra money, he spends it on video games. My mom gets money from her job, and she'll give that just straight to my girlfriend. That's like easy money. Chase has made the comment that if you're going to give money to Sydney and Noah, don't give them the money, give me the money. It almost seems to me that Chase is jealous of Noah. My mother treats my son like he's gold. When I do see how my mom treats my son, it makes me upset that I don't have that, and I didn't have that in the past. Well, Sydney, Chase's girlfriend and mother of their child, juggles two jobs, school and motherhood. She says it's time for Chase to grow up. So you think he can and needs to do more? Absolutely. Um, he says, hey, I've always stepped up, been there, paid, bought diapers, done things for my son. Chase bought diapers about how many times? Like four? Four times? I don't know. Maybe I've given you money. three or four times. You've bought no diapers. I, I bought him for everything. For Christmas, she didn't buy anything. I bought everything for Christmas. How much did I spend? 600 Where'd you get the 600 bucks? Working. I work. It's not... I don't know why they make it out like I'm not working. I work. But you, you told me you weren't working. No, right now I'm not working. Oh. Back then, I, I had... I mean, I had <clears> a whole bunch of jobs. I worked, uh, her mom helped me get the one job. They wanted be, me to be a supervisor. You quit that job. <clears throat> so know. how do you two get along? As you can tell. We don't get along. We get, we butt heads a lot. Yeah. How does he treat you? Chase treats me like I'm garbage. Absolutely, like I'm nothing. How so? The mental abuse got so bad I had to put my foot down and make him go to, or kick him out and he went to Texas. Mental abuse in what way? Give me an example. So Chase would call me a stupid, I mean, he says, it. are you stupid? Are you stupid? You're fat, ugly, bitch. You don't deserve to breathe. You should go kill yourself. Um, when I was nine months pregnant, you're a fat bitch. No. While I was working, cleaning, I was doing <clears throat> everything, and you'd sit on it freaking and do nothing. No. You messed my head up so bad. He did. You really did. I don't deserve oxygen. Yeah. Well, all that I hear is from her. I, I don't mean to. I even. Myself. You I, told me you've said. Yes, mother. How many times have you said all this to me, though? I never said those okay, things. Okay, wait a minute. We'll deal with that in a minute. You, you have to acknowledge something here. I'm wrong. Did you or did you not do the things that she said? I've said stuff like that. Yes. Because since you've come out here. You have denied, 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 denied. If, if we would listen to you, your life is perfect. You mean, you've no. told us your life sucks because she is a crummy mother, robbed you of your childhood, didn't teach you how to do anything, but nonetheless, you've apparently turned out to be an absolutely perfect young man, according to you. That's not true at all. Well, that's what you're telling us since you got here, because you oh, no, I'm employed, I'm going to school, my life is fine, I'm going along just fine. But now we talk to the mother of your child, and she's saying that you're telling her that she is a useless waste of space. Go kill yourself. Go drive your car and crash. You're a <laughs> mom. Tells her son, your mom is a bitch. You've called her the <laughs> word whore, ugly, stupid, dumb, no. nasty, disgusting, fat, uh, sperm whale. I mean, are, do you, is this what you say to her? No, I've said some of that stuff, but not, like, all of it. You said every single word. I mean, it's, it's not good, I'm telling you. I know it's wrong. But, I mean, it's... I mean, she says the same stuff to me. I never she said really does. like that. She, I would call you an ass. No. Off your, I've never said hurtful words that you said to me. I promise right now that you have, and you know it. Have you spit in her face? Have you spit in her face? Not that I know of. <laughs> I mean, honestly. No, we you fought. Don't. I mean, know or you don't know. well, I can't. I don't remember a lot of things from that concussion and stuff. I don't. I had a severe concussion to where it messed up. Honestly, it did. It messed up. I don't remember middle school. I don't remember a lot of things. But I don't, I've never. Have you pinched her and left bruises? I think in the beginning. We, I mean, she stabbed me with a key, and 
I mean, it's been bad. I mean, she was abusive, I was abusive. But I've never punched her or hit her or smacked her in the face, nothing. Have you kicked her? No. Have you dragged her off the bed by her feet? No. Have you pulled her out of the car by her hair? I have never pulled anybody out of a car. How do you know you have a concussion? <laughs> I have never pulled anybody out of any car ever in my life. I can back that up. Have those things happened? Absolutely. And you did pull my feet from my bed. You took my ankles off the bed and pulled me off when we were staying at my mom's house when I was like, when we were dating for about a year and my back hit the bed frame really hard. And then you told me, I wish I could push you into this mirror and watch you bleed. You don't remember anything. I never said any anything like that. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Everything's always wrong with Sydney. Because you, you, you just say crazy stuff. It's not even true. Have you threatened her with a hunting knife? No. Okay, twice. Well, no, I haven't. I don't know how you don't remember this stuff, Chase. You get so mad, you don't even realize it. You're just... You were cussing, you, think, yelling at me. I'm telling you. And you picked you. up the knife, trying to threaten me. You didn't know I would it never me, threaten you. you. I've never picked up any knife towards you. That's nuts. Okay, have you black. backhanded her in the car? When I have never When your son was in the car? No, sir. No, sir. Did you leave sir. a cut and a black eye? No, sir. What happened? No. What? That was a pimple, and she knew it, and she was sitting there. <laughs> No, Jill. honestly, because you sat there and she looked at me and she said, I hit her in the face. And I said, are you crazy? I've never hit you in the face. And then you sat there and I said, look, and you could tell it was a pimple on the side of her nose. And she said it was a bruise. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I had a huge bump, Chase. No, you didn't. A huge bump You were bump so is mad not... you don't realize you do these things. You were going no, like this. No, you can't, you You're can't convince me that. You're mad because I smoked a cigarette. I... You're just And you so punched wrong. my dashboard. Okay, I you did, did that. You stabbed and me in the chest so with mad. keys. You hit my you glasses stuff. and it went down really hard. That's when I started crying. No. And then I got home that day and you knocked over the TV and you knocked over the dresser. Do you remember? Because I had smoked a cigarette prior, no. two nights prior to that. And then I got in the shower and you came in the shower and you locked the door and you Nobody did anything turned like off that. the shower while I was freezing. You made me sit there for 20 minutes yelling in my face, Are telling you me crazy? how stupid I was. This is ridiculous. You told your mom her face ran into your elbow. I've never said that in my life. You That's are a liar right now. Oh, you are a liar. That did happen because we were on call that night and we had to go over to your house and we had That to... did not happen. You were not there. No, we had Ed and I had to go to your house, pick Sydney up and the baby. We took them to our house for the week and we didn't want you to know where she was to hopefully make you have a wake-up call, miss your son, you didn't call once while she was at the house. How could I know? You said you took her away. Well, you I didn't know. even try to get a hold of her on I her cell phone. I knew she was with you. I left you for took three her. days. You didn't call to check up on her. See, I was, you said it was like a vacation. When you, when so you, you not play your video games you said, online. You act like you're the innocent person here. This is why you guys always act I'm like innocent. victims. No, I she's, we're not, I have she's a, not acting like she's an innocent person. If you want, what I we're doing right now is we're talking about you. If we want to talk about what she can do to become a better person, mm -hmm. then we can schedule that and we can focus on her and empower her as a woman and a mother. Right now, we're talking about you. One thing I don't do is get deflected. Once I focus on one thing, I stay on that one thing. And I am more than happy to focus on you at another day and another time. But right now, I've been asked by you and by your mother to focus on you. And I don't deflect once I start But it's like three something. people that these two <clears throat> always gang up on me. I can never do anything right. He doesn't want anything to do with me. There's, <clears throat> I mean, they're just making me look bad. I oh. keep my I'm, mouth shut. Okay, I, hold that's on. good, because you don't a, have nothing to do This is a good say. time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they might be ganging up on you. I'm ganging up with you. Because what I want to do is help you change. Because whether you find it easy to admit it or not, you can't be proud of where you are at 23 years of age right now. Uh -huh. You want to change who you are and what you're doing. And I want to help you do that. I don't think you're a bad guy. I think you have maturity problems. I think right now when you tell me I don't know how to use a bus, that's what I expect to hear from someone that is younger than 23 years of age. And I'm not trying to ridicule you, I'm trying to point out that your mindset right now is not commiserate with your chronological age. And I, I get 
that that needs to change. And I have some questions for you and for you. And, and right now, you are a voice of reason in this, but you don't really get a vote because you're not his father and all you can do is support his mother. Now, Johnna says there is one person who she thinks is poisoning her son's mind, and it is not someone that's on this stage. Johnna says there is one person who is poisoning her son's mind. It's her own mother. Next time, Johnna's mother speaks out and reveals something no child should ever hear. It is so shocking, you will not want to miss part two of this story. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. My mother is demonic. I never wanted to have children. I hated kids. After my son was born, I told the doctor to tie my tubes or I'd kill the next one. When Shauna was three days old, I threw her down on the floor in my bedroom. I know that your brother lost his life. She told you that the wrong child died. How do you feel when you hear her say those things? She's evil. I hate her. That's tomorrow. For more information, log on to drphil.com. You can always find me on Twitter and Facebook. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, guys.